Hello everyone. My name is Andy Hopper and I'm a Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. In this video, we're going to explore how we can run the popular Nginx software package on Amazon EC2 A1 instances. For those of you who aren't familiar with the A1 instances, these are a new instance family that run on AWS Graviton processors. These processors are custom ARM64 CPUs built by AWS and can run workloads that are supported by the extensive ARM64 ecosystem. So let's get started. So I'm here in the AWS console and I'd like to launch a new EC2 instance to run Nginx. To do that, I'll click on EC2. And then once the dashboard comes up, I'll click on the launch instance button. When we announced the Graviton processors in reInvent of 2018, a new feature came online in the EC2 console. In particular, when you choose AMIs that support multiple processor architectures, you now have the ability to choose which processor architecture you'd like for your workload to run on. Uh, and we now support the x86 and ARM64 CPUs. Now, the AMI I currently have selected is the Amazon Linux 2 AMI, but we also have support for popular distros such as Red Hat, Ubuntu, or SUSE. But I'm going to go ahead and use the Amazon Linux 2 uh, AMI for this particular demo. So I'm going to choose 64-bit on ARM. Uh, and next, I'll get to choose the instance type I'd like for my workload to run on. So with the A1 instance family, we support everything all the way from A1 medium to A1 four extra large instances. So you have the flexibility to choose the amount of processing horsepower you'd like to throw at your workload. For this demo, I'm going to keep it fairly lightweight and I'll choose an A1 medium. Next, I'll configure the operating environment uh, for this uh, EC2 instance. I've got a VPC that I've configured for this demo. Uh, it's going to be a public facing server, so I'll go ahead and choose the public subnet. And for IP addressing, I'm going to go ahead and allow it to have an IP address, so I'll be able to reach it from the outside world. And then just to enable my ability to connect to it through SSM, I'm going to choose a, a, an instance role that permits me to connect to SSM. I'm going to go ahead and use the magic of video editing to skip over the remaining steps and I'll just see you on the other side once my EC2 instance gets launched. And great, so now my EC2 instance is finished launching, so let's connect to this box and install Nginx. Now, one of the things that I did when I was configuring this box is I enabled the ability to connect to it using Systems Manager. I did this so I wouldn't have to open SSH ports to the outside world, and Systems Manager has a feature called Sessions Manager, which allows me to connect to it through a web-based console. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll click to Session Manager, I will start a new session, and I will pick my Nginx box. So I'll start the session and this will get me to a shell console on the machine. I happen to prefer bash, so I'm gonna sudo to that. And now I'm gonna use, since I'm on Amazon Linux 2, I'm gonna use the Amazon Linux Extras tool to install Nginx. 1.12. And it will download all the necessary software to install Nginx on this machine. And in just a couple of seconds, it'll finish. And let's see if I've actually got an Nginx server running on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and curl to localhost. And look at that, I see HTML. And that's great, but let's actually see this uh, inside a web browser. So let's go back to EC2 so I can find out what the public address for this machine is. I'll click on my instances, and I will click on that public DNS and copy the URL for it. And if I navigate my browser to that location, there we go, I now see the Nginx welcome page. Now that's useful, I can configure the paths on this box so I can use Nginx as a web server. But what a lot of people install Nginx on a machine for is to act as a reverse proxy. So let's take a look at what we'd need to do to enable that. 
So let's take a quick look at our instances that I have inside this region. And uh, let's go ahead and clear that criteria. And I actually have two machines up and running inside this VPC. Uh, one is the Nginx box that I just created, but another one is a web server that I have hosted inside a private subnet, and it's got a private security group that's only allowing connections from boxes that are inside this public web uh, security group. So let's find out what the IP address of this machine is, and let's reconfigure Nginx so that it will proxy connections from the outside world down to this web server. So we'll go back to Systems Manager, and inside the console, we'll now edit the Nginx configuration file. Nginx.conf, and if we scroll down a little bit, where I previously had a location uh, that was going to be coming from the home directory of the server. Let's go ahead and modify this to be a proxy to my uh, internal web server. So I'll append the line here, and I will do, oops, pardon me, I'm going to use tabs. There, proxy pass HTTP, and then I will paste the IP address of that box, and I'll tell it to do it on port 80, and then I'll close off that line. So I will go ahead and save this configuration file, and then I will tell Nginx to reload the configuration. At this point, Nginx should be acting as a reverse proxy for my website. Let's go ahead and verify that. And there we go. So now I'm actually have Nginx on my A1 instance, and it's acting as an internal reverse proxy to a box that I have hosted inside a private subnet inside the same VPC. So let's recap. In this video, we launched a new Amazon EC2 A1 instance. We configured it to run the Nginx software package. We verified that it was able to run as a web server locally on the machine. And then we configured it to act as a reverse proxy for a web server that we had running inside a private subnet. I hope you found this video useful, and I can't wait to see what you build on A1 instances. Thank you.